good day. Today is a hideous day, but that's okay because the weather don't affect me. I'm in a good mood. I'm excited for the trading day and I cannot wait to see what happens. Yesterday though, we had a question. Did I make money? Did I lose money? That paper trade with the options, like what's going on with that? And I figured it out. I spent about three hours doing research. Though it probably didn't need to take me that long. I just hate doing research. I found out that when you sell a put, you actually make money when the price goes down. So when we bought in, we bought it at $1.88. When we saw it jump up to $1.98, we actually were down $10. And when we saw it, when the market closed and it dropped to $1.78, we actually are up $10. That's it. That's how you make money when you sell a put. Think about it like this. When you sell, you want to sell high. When you buy, you want to buy low. And in trading puts or uh, selling, yeah, selling puts, you keep the difference in that price. There you go. There you go. But yeah, after I figured that out, I actually checked out my watch list, narrowed everything down, uh, double checked everything that was on my watch list that's past the weekly check, the daily check, and now we're refining the hourly check and what's trading at support. We found a list of about 15, 12 to 15 stocks that are trading near the weekly support line, so we put those on a watch list, but uh, I I'm a little concerned because I'm noticing that the S&P 500 has some stocks with huge bid ask spreads. If you don't know what that is, that's the difference between the bid price and the ask price. It's, you want it to be about one cent, but sometimes it can be like a dollar, dollar twenty, and that's too volatile for me. I don't want to get into that right now. Uh, I'm comfortable with like a five cent, maybe even a ten cents a lot though. Five cent, four cent, three, two, one cent. Those are the ones where I'm comfortable with. So I'm thinking this morning that when we take a look at the watch list that we narrowed down to like about the 12, 15 stocks, right when the market opens, we're gonna take a look at that and decide which ones need to stay, which one's gonna need to go. And we're gonna base it off of the bid ask spread because I got about five too many stocks. We're eight minutes into the market and I wasn't even able to sort these graphs yet based off the bid ask price and we are triggering our buy and sell orders everywhere. Look at Dish, straight huge jump above our entry. Now you may be wondering like, Anthony, why don't you get in and look at how strong it's running? That's because it is trading, my entry is at $37 and it is at its peak was trading at 37.25. That's a 0.64% jump. It's only 25 cents, but it's over half a percent. That's a huge jump in the market, especially when you consider that 38 is our take profit. So I only leaves about 75 cents right there per share. And granted, that could be a win, that could not, but half a percent, that means we have to double that for our take profits. And that's gonna be actually, what is it? A percent and a quarter? About one and a quarter percent. As with Microsoft, everything, look at this. This is why we don't like playing the breakout. It bounced above and has worked its way back down and is now testing the support. I'm just paying attention to the 15 minute graphs. I do not buy anything until the 15 minute graph has closed and I kind of get an idea of what's going on. If we like, so you can see this huge rejection. If we find support here, I'm buying back, I'm buying in. That's just fitting my rules. And since the dish is on a freaking tear, I figured that I would take a look and see how my option was doing. And the craziest thing is like at the open of the market, it was trading up over uh, $2, even with this huge run. So I don't understand how that works. I'm, I know option prices are independent from stock prices, but when you sell a put, you're basically saying that you believe that the price will stay the same or go up. And when we skyrocket like that, why is the price jumping up? I don't understand. Now it's back down to $1.68 though. So, what? Okay, so this is getting insane. Well, this is insane, but we, we were able to control our thoughts and come up with a strategy. Basically what we did was we narrowed down these the swatch list down to five stocks that even with yesterday's drop has maintained their uptrend. The trend is your friend. And if we can maintain that, we're gonna maintain the trade and our ideals. 
So what I did was actually narrow it down to Dish, Masco, T-Mobile, Newmont, and CenturyLink. Those are the five stocks that have a decent bid ask spread and are still maintaining an uptrend. I'm gonna set alarms, I'm gonna set where I'm a buyer, and I'm gonna do the math, figure out exactly how many shares I'm willing to buy for each, depending on the bid, or depending on the entry and the stop loss, risking 1%. T-Mobile is running, jogging, sprinting, whatever you want to call it, it is moving so much so that this 15, 45 minutes, it has moved up about 1.22%. I don't feel comfortable getting into this just yet. That's too big of a gap for me to get in. With this kind of run right here, if we did like the stop loss and everything like that, it says that we can only get about five shares. I wanted something a little bit tighter, especially seeing how we're trading on support. If we can find support on the 15, bounce off on the hourly, set this as the new higher low on the hour, that means we can get a few more shares, which means that we can get out faster. With that said, I'm also looking at CenturyLink, but with this trade, I'm thinking more that I would play the options trade, because that sounds like a lot of fun to me, that in fact that like getting into the options trade would only be about $95. It's not a huge potential win. I mean, but $95 is a lot of money. Um, but yeah, everything is looking good here. It might be the trade just so that we can like dip our toes into options trading. As you can see, we have maintained the hourly trend, setting a higher low. That's a daily trend. We have an hourly decline, found support on the weekly support. And if we can set a higher high on the hourly, that is at $14.64, I'm a buyer. With all that said though, we did enter a like paper trade for options. We entered a paper trade for Sony. Basically it's been trading in this like tight, funnel for the past 10 days between 71 dollars and between 71 dollars and 73 dollars when we were close to the 71 dollar point we actually set that paper trade we bought a sony february 28th 72 put at two dollars and 95 cents one contract is about 295 dollars of credit and that means we have two paper trades open on options and so far they're both up so i mean that's cool i'm really excited to see how these things work out possible trade coming up t-mobile broke above the daily support has set a higher high a lower high on the hourly as well and now it's testing the recent higher high what we need is a break above the previous hours like right here we need to break above this 15 minute graph is right here and if we get a strong break and then a retest showing that this is now support I'm a buyer looks like we just got a notification Garmin has set a new 52 week high looking here it says let's get this glare out how do we get the glare out <laughs> if you look here you notice that here 10130 that is the support slash will support now it was resistance if we get a retest of that i may just be a buyer we just had that break above 8205 it looks like a decent break if it closes 8205 calculate we're going to collect 8.802 shares and we put an order in 82.05. Right now we're at 82.14. And this is where the emotions start kicking in. You know, you start getting, this is definition of fear of missing out. You start seeing the stock moving up. You're wondering if, hey, should I chase it? And the answer is no, you really shouldn't. You should put your stop or your, your entries where you believe they're good entries. Now, if this stock doesn't actually tag me in, that's okay. Because there's other stocks. That, and I think I'm already... I've hit my monthly goal, so I'm not really stressing it. It's better to be smart, it's better to be patient, it's better to be disciplined than it is to be foolish. 
But still, I mean, I want to get in. Fingers crossed that we get in. <laughs> it is about freaking time. It has. We've been waiting for this trade to execute for break. Three hours and 15 minutes. But it's a beautiful thing that we didn't actually chase it. Because if we did, let's take a look at this. If we chased it, we... we would be down by like a quarter of a percent right now. <sighs> Granted, I'm not completely sold on this trade. We bought on a daily support, not a weekly support, but a lot of the technicals seem pretty okay. Uh, but I mean, only, only time will tell, you know. What's the worst gonna happen? We're gonna lose 1%? We win some, we lose some. Now I'm excited about this trade, but I also want to let you know while I was waiting for those three hours, I saw two potential paper trades for short puts that I want to tell you all about. We got CTL, the February 21st, $15 put at 98 cents. We're paper trading that. That is a max profit of $98. And then we got T-Mobile, February 21st, $82.50 put at $2.31. We're paper trading that. It's a max profit of $200.31. Now, I tried to get into the CTL trade, actually get into that, but so I didn't have enough money in my account, so I needed like a thousand something dollars to be deposited because you have to be able to cover the, um, the loss. And with shorting puts, you have a much larger, larger potential loss than you do potential win. And the trade-off is that you actually have two ways to actually win instead of just one, which increases your odds to like 66%. But yeah, let me tell you about all the details that make me so excited about the T-Mobile trade. And when it comes to trading, we always trade from the top down. So we're going to start with the weekly graph. Right here, we noticed that there was a correction along here. We set a lower, a lower high, lower low, and then we had a huge run to set a higher high. Looks like we have a little bit of correction here. We maintain the trend and we are trading on a five green candle. Our rule is that we do not trade on anything above a five green weekly candle. We bring it down to the daily. We look, we have like, we've had a 13 day run. That's what this white candle means. We had a 13 day run. And that means there's, we are going to expect a three to five day correction. So we had a one day, a two day, three day correction. Today being a red green, a red three candle, and we have bounced above the daily support. This, if you notice, I don't think this seems to have had a drop. So in my mind, this is still maintaining a daily uptrend. And with this purple line being below, it means we are maintaining the weekly uptrend. When we go down to the hourly graph, Right here, we noticed that we found that support. We ran up, bounced above, retested that support. We set the alarm for $82 because that is the high of the, the latest hourly high. When that broke, we were excited. That's when it got a little far away from us. And when we look into the 15 minute graph, that's when it broke about right here. And that's when we started freaking out because it wasn't filling our order. And unfortunately, but fortunately, it broke out of the 15 minute trend line and has retested the support. Now, I mean, this sucks because I was a little bit torn about entering because we did have like a break of the trend line. So what I was thinking about and debating about was like, should I just draw a new trend line? I guess it would be like, like this. But actually, let's try this. So boom, boom, and then buy when it breaks out of that. And the answer is maybe. But if you like look, let's pull back, set this here. Oh, let's get the, if we put a marker on $82 and you look to the left, you notice that it's support. Support on the daily, boom. And if we look further back, look, 
$82 seems to be a major moving ground. Now keep in mind, supports and resistance are, what is the word, zones. So it's not exact number, but around this zone you can expect expect some moves. Expect up or down, who knows. It could be an acceptance or rejection. There's only one way to find out. And with everything leading up to this saying that it is a potential buy, I bought it thinking what is the worst that's going to happen? We're going to lose six bucks. It's okay. Just like that, 3 p.m., we are down about half a percent on our T-Mobile trade. Like we said, we broke out of the 15-minute slash hourly uptrend, and that kind of just like, that should have been the sign not to get in, you know? Lessons cost money. You don't go to college for free, right? Either way, we're still in the trade. Uh, we could potentially set a two-hour higher low, so, and four-hour higher low, so, you know, we will let things play out the way they need to be because our stop loss is under the daily support. As for the paper trades, we are down $1 on the T-Mobile short put. We are up $40 on the Sony uh, short put, $30 on the CTL short put, and down $7 on the DISH short put. I don't know about you, but I had a blast today and today i am grateful for my progression seeing how far i've come just with patience alone i would have chased that trade and we would have been down even more money if that was the case i'm also grateful for the lesson that it taught me maybe next time if we see it break out the trend redraw the new trend and buy on the break of that lessons have been learned Anyways, in the comments below, let me know what you are grateful for. And while you're down there, hit the like button, subscribe, stay positive, and don't forget to do amazing things. <sighs> Steph. What's up? How's it feel to have 3,000 subscribers? <laughs> it's really cool. It's cool that it's growing and we're doing more things, which I like.